Over the last four videos in this series, we've taken an in-depth look at Jeppesen chart products like approach plates, taxiway diagrams, departure and arrival procedures, and en route charts. Now, we're on the ramp at 33 Victor, Walden, Colorado in the mountains, to make a short but challenging IFR flight to Rocky Mountain Metro in Denver, where we'll put all of what we've learned to use. This is Dan from Flight Insight, partnering with ForeFlight on a series of videos highlighting the Jeppesen chart products and how they integrate with ForeFlight Mobile to make your instrument flights safer and smoother. We're going to highlight the binder feature here in ForeFlight to help us organize all the charts for the flight. Here's our cleared route of flight today. Although a direct route would take us to the southeast of Denver, because of the high terrain, we're going to need to fly an obstacle departure procedure, the Walru 1, which will take us to the Victor 524 airway, over to the Laramie VOR, where we pick up an arrival route, the Rams 8, into Rocky Mountain Metro. So we're going the long way around to the north and east over Wyoming on the way down to Denver. With the route set, we can create a binder for this flight with all the chart products we'll need. Be sure to use the pack feature as well while you're on the ground and still have an internet connection. So we'll tap plates on the bottom menu, then binders in the top left corner. The side menu has options for flight and other binders. You can see I've got some preferred plates saved in my other binder, but we'll want to add a new flight binder. We can bring in the route we just created in maps. We'll close the sidebar menu to get a full screen view of what we have all the procedure charts for the departure and arrival airports, beginning with the airport diagram, followed by the departure procedure. We're using the wall route one as we input to our route. If we hadn't added a departure to the route, we'd see all the available procedures here. This is the case for the next set of plates, the approaches into 3-3 Victor. Now, we don't plan to land back at our departure airport, but it's always a good idea to get familiar with one or more in case we need to head back here. At our destination, we see our selected arrival, the Rams 8. Again, had we left the star out of our route, we'd see all available. Under Approaches, we see all of them for Metro. We can use this to review notams for each, and speaking of which, pulling up the last chart, the airport diagram, we can look at any airport notams, as well as plan our on-field arrival on the ramp. One great feature in binders is the ability to move easily between plates using the three-finger swipe. We'll literally hold three fingers on the screen and swipe them right or left to move between selected plates. We haven't yet selected an approach into Rocky Mountain Metro, so we skip over that from the arrival plate straight to the taxiway diagram, but later in the flight, when our approach is assigned by ATC, we can select it by tapping the checkbox next to the approach. From our starting point on the ramp here, we can go into our binder to the taxiway diagram for 3-3 Victor. As a non-towered field, the FAA doesn't publish an airport plot here, but Jeppesen has it covered with this plate, typically called 10-9 after the identifier on top. Besides the familiar runway and taxiway orientations which allow us to navigate on the ground, we have frequencies, additional runway information, notes, and takeoff minimums. In that section, it references the Walru 1 departure, so we move to that plate in the binder where we can do a full brief. Because we're using geo-referencing in ForeFlight, we can visualize the procedure. We're departing into the strong wind on runway 22, so we'll proceed to Septi, then Folto, then Walru, where we'll need to cross at or above our MEA or enter the depicted hold. We see that the MEA for the airway we're joining from Walru is 14,200 feet. We'll need to be at that altitude at Walru or hold until we can cross there. Let's say we'll climb to a file cruise of 15,000. Assuming we have no trouble reaching 15,000 prior to Walru, we'll proceed along the Victor Airway from there towards the Laramie VOR identifier Lima Alfa Romeo. This is also where the Rams 8 arrival begins, so we can pull up that in our binder and begin a brief. We'd be talking to Denver Center by now, who would have cleared us onto the arrival. We see that besides the mandatory altitude for jet aircraft at Rams, there are no crossing restrictions on this star so we won't be told to descend via this arrival and should expect to remain at our last assigned altitude until told otherwise. We also pick up the ATIS at Rocky Mountain Metro and hear that the RNAV to runway 12 left is in use, so we can move to that chart in the binder and start a brief as well. Coming from the north like we are, we could expect to start the approach from drop. Just as before, we've overlaid the star on the moving map so we can see it along with our route. Here we have the opacity set to have the in-route chart beneath it show through a bit, but that can be turned off if it's distracting. 
Once we're given a descent and handed off the Denver approach, we're told to proceed to drop for the approach. A nice thing about the binder functionality is that as we finish briefing the approach plate, we can move onto the airport diagram and brief our arrival on the ground. Remember that the flight doesn't end with the landing. We need to plan our taxi to the ramp, which can be especially involved at a busier airport like Metro. Today, we're going to Signature Aviation. If we tap FBO on top, we can see the on-field options and plan out that from runway 12 left, we'll exit left at either Taxiway Golf or the High Speed Alpha 5. If we really need more runway, we'll go beyond the crossing with 3, 2, 1 and use one of the left exits after that. So we've now seen how putting all the Jeppesen plates together on a flight like this and leveraging the binders function in ForeFlight can bring amazing clarity to your IFR flights. Don't be afraid of Jeppesen products. I urge you to get familiar with them and make them part of your instrument flights too.